I like ARDF because it's a good amalgamation of amateur radio and it's good for people that like the outdoors because you have to be able to take bearings on maps and it's basically a mix of orienteering and amateur radio and it's something that caters for everyone because you have the people that like the construction that can build the receiver kits and then you have the people that like going out and doing the physical side of it. Whether it's receiving video from the International Space Station, restoring classic broadcast vehicles, going out portable and operating from a hilltop, or experimenting with Raspberry Pi, you know, amateur television has got something for everybody. Radio construction is all about building your own radio equipment. Okay. And I like it because it helps you to understand the theory and the technology behind it. It's extremely rewarding. You get an immense satisfaction from using something that you've built yourself. And I guess that's true whether it's a, a steam engine, a, an aeroplane, or, or a piece of radio equipment. I love data contesting because it's, it gets to use all the technology that I've learned and I get to use it on the radio, I get to just just be me, my call sign. The, the club I belong to has a really good contest group, so we all compete against each other. I like shortwave DXing because of the buzz I get when I make a long distance, sometimes challenging contact. When I hear a, a weak, watery, fluttery signal come over the North Pole from the Pacific, some remote island, and I can work it with my, I can contact it with my station. It makes my day. Moon Bounce is bouncing amateur radio signals off the moon and receiving them back on Earth. Why am I passionate about it? It represents the greatest technical challenge there is in amateur radio. For me, it's the heavy metal end of amateur radio. Large aerials, lots of metal in the sky and lots of power. So space communications is setting up a communications link uh, between two stations, perhaps uh, not normally uh, uh, able to be able to do so uh, with terrestrial uh, communications. So what we do is we use satellites in order to be able to extend how far our signal can get. And uh, what really gets me uh, interested in space communications is the challenge. Uh, the additional effort that's involved there, that, that I can uh, use a satellite that's uh, been built by radio amateurs just like me, and we can use that to extend how far we can get with our communications, perhaps even to the other side of the world. Suda is um, summit in the air, which is when you climb up a mountain and transmit from the top to see how many contacts you can get. I like Suda because it combines two hobbies that I'm passionate about, and that's amateur radio and hiking in the mountains. Um, Suda brings a new challenge to amateur radio and um, that's trying to make a contact while the elements are fighting against you and that's why I feel that one contact on the top of a mountain is worth more than 50 in the log. I find it fascinating because there's so much change as in many other areas. Uh, particularly, for example, we have these wonderful tiny devices that come from mobile phones and that sort of thing that we can re-engineer into amateur products and services. And we also need to find the ways to deal with them, to manage to handle them because they're so tiny. This doesn't just apply to the products, the, the physical device, it also applies in terms of software. Amateurs are reusing software into new applications all the time. It's immense. Limitless. Opportunity. Sheer diversity. Vast. Yeah. Inclusive. Breathtaking. Fascinating. It's the challenge. It's educational and it's fun. The beauty of the hobby for me is the diversity. You haven't got time to do everything, but that's fine, because if there's one thing that you don't like, try something else. There's a million different aspects of the hobby and there's something out there for everyone.